Welcome to this Mimics imprint video, a video in which I will guide you through the segmentation and creation of a 3D model of the skull. I am Job der Kinderen, an application engineer at the headquarters of Materialize in Leuven, Belgium. Mimics imprint is a software program especially developed to help users go from a medical scan to a 3D model. In order to do so, it uses a very powerful yet simple predefined workflow to minimize time and optimize user friendliness. This video focuses on the cranio maxilio facial applications of Imprint. However, there are other modules of the software available, such as for the cardiovascular and orthopedic fields. In this clip, I will show you the basic layout of Imprint and the five steps you will have to follow in order to construct the cranium and the mandible from a CT scan. First, we need to load in the DICOM files. By clicking File and New from Disk, a folder selection window opens. Here you can select the location of the DICOMs. It's important to select the whole folder, not just only one file. By clicking Next, all the DICOM studies will be converted. In the second window, we need to select which study we want to segment. In the folder, two studies are present, as you see here. On the top right, you can see a preview of the actual slices, where you can scroll through and assess the quality of the scan. The number, indicated here, shows the amount of slices in the study. Additionally, in the bottom, you'll see the DICOM tags, where you can look at the acquisition details, for example. Both windows can be used to select the right study from the available studies. If you have selected the right study, you can click Convert. After converting the files, a window will pop up, asking you to assess the orientation. Should you want to make a change in the orientation, left-click on the letters and choose a different option. In this case, your orientation of the scan is correct and we click OK. In the top left corner, we can see the five workflow steps we'll need to follow. Create region of interest, edit region of interest, add part, edit part, repair print. Below these steps, the guided tools are available. Below that, we'll find the object list, which later on in the clip will get filled up by newly created region of interest or parts. At the top of the screen in the middle, you'll see the general toolbar. Then, four viewports are visible. The coronal, axial, sagittal, and the 3D previewer. And below those are the log and visualization tabs, such as the contrast tab, in which the grayscale can be altered to visualize specific regions. Our aim is to make two separated 3D parts, one of the cranium and one of the mandible, which we can use afterwards for further surgical planning. The first step is creating the region of interest. This is done by setting a threshold. What you can immediately notice is the 3D preview image created in the lower left viewport, which is not yet a 3D model. What you also see is that a preset has been set on Bone CT. If you left click this arrow, you will get a drop down menu with all kinds of different presets. However, for this clip, we're interested in the bony parts, so therefore we keep the presets to bone. If you still want to tweak manually the Hounsville range, this is possible by moving the sliders. If you also like to exclude certain structure, you can use the crop box to crop the region of interest. Make sure you scroll through the images and verify that, the, that neither the cranium nor the mandible are outside the bounding box. We can see some floating scatter present. And that's why I choose to keep largest region. This will delete most of the floating scatter. 
I will also check fail holes because you can see that some of the trabecular bone is not fully within my threshold value and by checking this box those tiny holes will be filled. By clicking on the green button the software will start constructing this region of interest. What do we want to do in this step? First we're going to delete the vertebra. Second we'll separate the cranium from the mandible and third We'll delete some of the scatter still present in the region of interest. First, let's delete the vertebra. We can do this with the split function. In this function, we need to select the region of interest we want to edit. Select a foreground that we want to keep and the background where we want to get rid of. In order to do this, we have to find a good slice. I prefer the coronal slice because this will give a clear separation between the occipital condyle and the first cervical vertebra. And because I'm only going to use this view, I will enlarge the view with the space button. Then I will indicate the foreground and the background in this joint. And I will also select the rest of the vertebra. This tool can be used on multiple slices per iteration. However, it's so powerful that for this operation, I will only need to indicate it on one slice. By clicking the green button, the program will start separating the spine from the skull on all the slices. In this second step, we want to separate the cranium from the mandible. This we will also do by using the split tool. We'll select again the region of interest, but this time we'll select create result in new region of interest and call it cranium. Now I will select the coronal view where both the mandible condyles are visible. And I will carefully select the cranium parts as the foreground. and the mandible condyles as the background. By clicking the green button, a new region of interest will be created only showing the cranium. Since we have two ROIs, one containing the cranium and mandible, and one containing the cranium, we can subtract the former from the latter, providing us an ROI of only the mandible. To do this, choose the subtract tool. In the first selection, select the largest region of interest, in this case the bone CT. In the second, we'll select the cranium. And I will check the box create new region of interest and I will rename it as mandible. By pressing the green button, you'll see that the new region of interest will appear called mandible and only displays the mandible. Now I will remove some of the scatter on the right side of the mandible near the second molar. To do so we will use the lasso tool. With this tool we can edit the ROI we want directly on the images or in the 3D viewport. It is also possible to edit the region of interest slice per slice to fully clean up the model. However, for the current application, this is not necessary. If we are satisfied with our region of interest, we can continue to the add part step. In this step, the software constructs a 3D part using the region of interest we define. When the parts are constructed, the software automatically goes to the fourth step, called Edit Part. The contours of the created parts are automatically shown on the image. In this way, you can assess the accuracy of the part. So, this is now a 3D part. Now, we're going to initiate the smoothing process by clicking the Smooth button. After selecting the part, we can give values to different parameters, such as detail, which refers to the lowest visible detail, 
this will set to 0.5 millimeters and fill cavities under, which refers to the size of the gaps that are filled after smoothing. This we also set to 0.5 millimeters and we keep the option create results in a new part on. In this way, if you don't like the smoothness you have applied on the part, you can go back and try with different values until you get the desired result. And as you see now, two parts are newly created which have a much smoother appearance than the ones before. I will rename the parts so that in a later process I know which part is which. After this step, we go to the last step, Prepare Print. In this step, we'll run the diagnostics by clicking on the Repair button. After some processing, we will see Ready for Printing in this dialog box, which means that the part which is selected is ready for printing and doesn't contain errors. We'll do the same for the cranium. So, now both parts are ready for printing and can be exported as STL files. Thank you for watching. For me it was a pleasure running this tutorial and if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact us.